escuchar Los seros humillados Para cumplir hoy tu voluntad Por eso hoy Let's give a big round of applause to everybody joining us for this panel this morning. We're just waiting on Danny. Oh, okay. <laughs> so while he's doing that, we're going to continue with our What's Next series. So as David was saying, we're going to talk about discover your purpose. You know, last week we shared uh, find freedom and the time before that, knowing God. So we're going to continue to learn how we can develop our relationship with God and really find out what our true calling is and some tips that can help you because I know some, there's times where I'm like, Jesus, am I doing the right thing? I don't know anymore. Like, I, I just, I don't know. Like, if I had to describe it how I feel some days, it's I don't know, <laughs> right? And that's pretty confusing because obviously we are seeking God, we're seeking Jesus and what he wants, to, you know, we say, God, let your will be done. Let your will be done. And then, you know, in our moments of flesh, it's like, okay, but what does that mean? How do we do that? So I'm really hoping that through this panel, you can have some good notes to write down on how to discover your purpose. Um, you know, you may ask yourself, like, what motivates me to get up in the morning? Do you get up in the morning and you go, okay, do I really need this job? Oh, yeah, I got bills to pay. So I do need this job, you know. I hope it's not like that, but hopefully, you know, you're pursuing your passion um, and in something that you truly love to do. In the What's Next series, Chris Hodges tells a story about a greyhound race. So there are dogs, essentially, that are going in this race where they have to chase a little rabbit, okay? So he's talking about this story where in this particular race, they let the dogs go to chase the bunny, and it explodes, so then the dogs, they're, you know, you would think they've done this so many times, they would continue running the race. But they actually stop, they get confused, they lose track of what they're doing, they start barking at the crowd. Um, one of them actually runs into the wall, according to the story, you know, so he's just out of control. And so he's explaining how many of us are like that through life where we have nothing to chase or we don't know what we're chasing and we're just crashing against the walls and we're just running in circles, maybe not even going anywhere, not even doing the race, but like spinning, I guess you could say, you know? So uh, that's many of us where we're just struggling to find out what it is that we're truly looking for. You may think, okay, am I looking for a new job because I need more money so I can go on more vacations and then I'll be the happiest person in the world, right? We see on Instagram, like, oh, they're right now sipping on a piña colada. I want that to be me. As soon as I can get that, there will be no more problems in my life. Or as soon as I can send my kids off to college, then I have no more worries. As soon as I just have enough of that. Or maybe you're single and you're like, okay, as soon as I find the right man, I'll be, I'll be good, you know, like, he's going to be the answer to everything. And then you get married, right? And then it's like, okay, we got a lot to learn. <laughs> uh, so, you know, there's different things that we could be chasing. But unfortunately, sometimes we achieve those things, and then we still feel empty. You know, we pray, God, I, this is the job. I promise I'm going to serve you. I'm going to be everything. Just this one thing, you know, and, and God does bless us and he gives us the abundance and he gives those things that we're asking for. And then it's like we forget, right? Okay, you know, God, this is what I prayed for, but why am I still unhappy? Why? And the good news, though, is that God gives us a purpose, right? And so we're going to learn how to discover that and how to truly live it out so that we can live our calling and from that, you know, we already have what it takes. Like, that purpose is already inside us. It's not like we need to go to a destination, like, put it in the GPS and be like, Cindy's destination. No. Cindy's purpose. No. It's, I already have it inside of me. Now I just need to figure out how to unlock it. Okay? So how can we discover our purpose? If we discover the way that we've been made and what God already puts in us, then we'll be able to follow that path. So Danny, 
I wanted to ask you a question because there's three things we're going to learn about specifically, and one of them is spiritual gifts. This is going to help us lead to discovering our purpose. So how would someone find out what gifts and abilities God has placed in them? Good morning. How's everyone doing? <laughs> uh, I mean, there's no better place to find your gifts than I think in the house of the Lord. So you guys are in the right place. Uh, but in the book, um, it's, it kind of breaks it down into three things. The first one is, uh, what are your talents and what are you passionate? You know, what's your passion? For me, it was easy. Obviously, music is my passion. So it was really simple for, for me to find my, my gift and where I'm going to serve. But for other people, uh, let's see here. Uh, there's people that love to talk. Who loves to talk? Yeah. <laughs> so if you love to talk, you know, open a connect group. There's there's. Uh, you know, we need youth leaders, uh, anything that has to do with church here. We need you guys. Uh, there's people that love to work with kids. We got to see three kids. Yeah. There's people, pe people persons. I don't know how to ex explain that a little more, but greeters. I mean, if you love saying hi to people, you know, there's a place for you here. It's just a matter of finding what you're passionate about and, uh, you know, finding that, that place where where we need you. Uh, another thing it says, it's your, uh, you know, using your life experiences and your pain. There's a lot of things that people go through in life. Uh, for me, something that my family went through was a broken home. So I feel like I can speak about that and I can help people with that. So it's using your testimony and, and going from there. There's other things. There's people that have gone to jail, people that have gone, you know, homeless people. There's just different things where you can when you can use, and you can use that to, to help other people. Um, so it's just finding that, applying it here, so other people can, can relate to it. And that's, I think that's an easy way to find your gift. Okay, that's good. Uh, so does God put more importance on certain spiritual gifts more than others? So like because you're an amazing piano player and I can't play the piano, <laughs> is yours more important? <laughs> Uh, not at all. Uh, I think God sees everything the same. One example that I've, I guess I've applied was, we're all a team here, so everything happens for a reason. The first person gets here like at 7.30, 7.45, opens the door, unlocks everything, and then the sound guy comes, turn on the sound, uh, and then uh, the greeters come, they say hi to everybody. Uh, Nine o'clock comes, worship starts. And then that transitions to Greg and Cindy coming up to pray, which they did. Do they do awesome, by the way? Thanks. And then after that, what happens? Pastor Mario comes up and always talks about. Uh, well, David comes up and he talks about the tithes, offerings, and then Pastor Mario comes and he talks about the events, and then he hypes up Pastora Mayra for her to come <laughs> preach. Pastora Mayra then comes preach, and then there's C3 kids in the back while they take care of the kids. What else? That's pretty much a rundown of the service. But what I'm trying to get to is, at the end of the day, if that one person receives Jesus, then as a team, collectively, that was what we, that was the goal. And God doesn't see it any differently. God doesn't see it as, oh, okay, well, Danny played the piano amazing today. It was because of him. No. Everybody's the same. Everyone has a part. We're all the body of Christ at the end of the day. And you need, everyone needs to join in and be a part of that. So you're saying the whole thing and everybody's spiritual gifts are important because it's a team effort. So who becomes part of the team? Who does God want to use? He wants to use everyone. There's no, God doesn't take exception. God doesn't want to like, he doesn't, he sees everyone and he wants to use everyone. But the real question is, do you want to be used by God? Wow. Do you want to set yourself up to be like, hey, yes. I want to be used. As long as you have a willing and able heart, and he, you use the gift that God placed in you, I mean, then he can use you. In the end of the day, it's just a matter of finding what your gift is. And I guarantee you, he'll place you in, in situations where you're going to use your gift. So it's just a matter of you wanting it, uh, you wanting to serve. And I'm pretty sure God's going to put you in those situations and you'll be used. 
Wow, that's amazing. And, you know, through this series of what's next, it's things that we apply through our growth track too. So you might say, I don't even know where to start to find what my purpose is. So we have our growth track that goes on every month where we have an assessment that you can do to figure out those things. Maybe you're like, no, I'm, I don't like to talk to people, but you're really always talking to people, but you just haven't recognized it. So through the assessment and that, you can just kind of get the confirmation of, no way, I can do this. I can be a greeter or I can put my spiritual gifts that God has placed in me for whatever ministry that we have here at, at C3. So just kind of keep that in mind to apply spiritual gifts. You can go through our growth track and find out what you're really good at and then apply it to your life. So like David said, it's about actually putting things into play and so we can transition in our lives. Uh, another part of discovering your purpose is through the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ, right? It's not like a, a figure that we're expecting to see. You and I all together are the body of Christ. And that means to have commitment. So Gregory, I have a question for you. <laughs> yes, beautiful. <laughs> is uh, <laughs> being a part of the dream team, what values or experiences can you share on why it's important to have a commitment to your church or our church, I would rather say? <laughs> well, one thing with commitment, kind of like you said, is, you know, do you want to be used by God? And, you know, when I first came here to C3, there was no English service. It was Spanish. So one of the first commitments I had at C3 was greeting at the door. And granted or not, this is why I learned Bienvenidos in C3 Church. So <laughs> I was like, I'm pretty good at this. I'm like, all right. But then, and then we started, when I started here, um, I started having tithe bath, uh, baskets at the front. And I was like, you know, God, I want to serve more. I want to hold those tithe baskets. I think that would be a pretty awesome opportunity. Little did I know that standing in front of a crowd as the white guy in front of 500 Spanish speakers, it kind of gets to you just a little bit. I'm like, you know, maybe I can uh, hide my translator a little bit in my ear and they'll, they'll never suspect anything until pastor was like, he asked me something in Spanish and I was just like, si, senor. And so I said, <laughs> um, but you know what? I love serving and the commitment to God. And whether it was in Spanish, English, God is and was the focus during this. And honestly, through one of the biggest commitments and challenges that I've ever been asked, uh, especially with my wife, is spreading the word, you know, spreading his word on, this, on stage. And the day we were asked, I was like, whoa, 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 God. Are you sure? Are you sure of us? I'm like, you sure it wasn't the couple next to us? Like, it was supposed to go that way, just curve around us? And, you know, but committing to that calling has really, really opened a doorway for me personally and my wife's, our mind and our heart, uh, you know, to God's word and commitment to the church, you know, whether to the church, the Growth Academy, our dream team, it really brings you to a place closer to God, serving him with all your heart, but not alone. It's together, you know, it's encouraged and it really changes you. I love that. I do remember when we were at the doors, we also had flyers to hand out. I was like, just hold the flyers. You got this. Just give one to everybody. <laughs> we're not in those days anymore. <laughs> uh, so my second question for you is commitment in today's culture is almost a rarity, even more so when it comes to church. What advice can you give to today's culture about being committed? You know, on a realistic note, and today, you know, we live in a world where honestly very few people are willing to be you know, committed to anything. Um, it's, a, it's a very fast-paced moving society where if it's not here in front of you and you don't have to work for it, it you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, and that comes with a job, that comes with a marriage, you know, our church, you know, some of us can't even commit to making our clothes in the laundry basket, and, and I, I'm not one of them. You can, you can vouch for me on that one. <laughs> but, you know, dealing with church in this type of perspective, it's really developed a, what, you know, what they call a church shopper and hopper. It's kind of an interesting term when I heard it, because I was like, a church shopper and hopper, that sounds kind of interesting. And, you know, people, they come to a church, and, you know, their focus isn't really God. It's more so, you know, I don't like the worship music, or I don't want to be a part of, a, as Pastor says, a hot church, you know, honest, open, transparent, that's offensive. Or even me, um, you know, there was a time when Pastor Rob Carmen visited, and that man is brutal. Yeah, <laughs> I learned firsthand that man is brutal. <laughs> um, but you know, or you, you know, you may not like the decorations. Um, however, battling church commitment, you know, 
seek God, you know, let God be the focus, you know, start by joining the Growth Academy, you know, join the dream team, know God, you know, just like it says over there, know God, find freedom, you know, discover your purpose and make a difference, you know, growth in the dream team, it really swims against society because it's a, it's, it's a membership that uh, goes against, you know, consumer type mentality, that shopper and hopper, you know, this type of commitment builds character with your church and it builds it up with God through good times and bad through joyful seasons and painful storms. And how could you say that the commitment, how could we compare it to marriage? Just because you and I are married and, you know, how could we say that the commitment, like if we didn't have commitment between us, like how could we compare that to the church? You know, it's, it's if you don't have commitment, things will fall apart. It will fall apart. If you don't have commitment with God, it'll fall apart. And from day one, with her, I, you know, I, I always say it, but it's true. I said, this is it. This is commitment. No divorce, nothing. I'm like, you're in it. You're in it. There's no other way out. And, you know, it's just like with the church, you know, be committed to God. Things will go the way they need to because he has a plan for you with that commitment. Yeah. And we joke around. We have pictures from our wedding. And I think we may have told some of you, like, on the wall, we'd be like, okay, you see these pictures here? This is where our commitment yeah. It used, that was the moment that we said, I do. Like, yeah. don't forget. And sometimes I think we need that, like, in-your-face commitment. And so that's what we can get here is when people are asking you, hey, do you want to help out here? Or do you want to help out there? God's sending a message. You know, sometimes we get upset with the things that are really, like, in the back of our mind. Like, oh, I need to get on that. And why would they tell me? How do they know? Who told them? You know, and with the commitment, I just wanted to add that, we have to work at it every day, like in our marriage. So it's not going to be something from night to day. It's something that we're continuing to work on uh, for our church. And one thing on that, too, is it's kind of funny. Actually, before we used the word commitment, we joked around. We said contract. Like, oh, there's a contract on the wall. But honestly, contracts, they're for a time limit. They're, they, they go away. They're up. Commitments are not a time limit. Commitments last. And that's one thing I want, you know, to realize that it's not a contract. You're not signing up for a contract here. It's a commitment. Okay. And then the Bible says that the church is resembled as the body of Christ. How is this represented today? And how can we as members of our church build into the body of Christ alongside with commitment? So being that the church is mirrored as the body of Christ, your gifts are designed to serve and meet the needs of the rest of the body. You know, it's not just yourself. You know, it's the church and it's people. You know, your purpose cannot exist in a vacuum. You know, to kind of put it in a little graphical term, if you, cut, if you cut off someone's hand, that person's body will continue to grow, but the hand will shrivel up and, you know, and die. And in order for that hand to grow, it must be connected to its body, which is the church. So if you aren't connected with those around you, you know, you too will shrivel and diminish, um, just like that hand. You know, God's, God's word is clear. It says the whole body supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews, I think I pronounced that right, grows as God causes it, ca causes it to grow. I can't be me without you, and you can't be you without me and the others around you. You know, just to kind of leave a solid picture of this, of this frame, think of, there's a particular type of tree, it's called an aspen tree. These trees always grow in groups. In fact, even their roots become intertwined together and share the same nutrients. Their health and growth of one, of one aspen depends on the others around it. So just like those aspen trees, your health and growth depend on the people around you, just as their health and growth depend on you as well. That's good. I feel like that was in my face. <laughs> How many of you are feeling like that? Like, breathe, it's okay, everybody's kind of quiet. Like, are you thinking in your mind, like, am I doing enough, not enough, right? Uh, and so far, we've learned to discover our purpose through our spiritual gifts and through the body of Christ. The body of Christ, like I said, I feel like is really confrontational and something that you could maybe review at, at home and see how maybe you could do a little bit more or what you're called to do. Um, but last but not least is growth. So you don't have to wait on God to give you a signal in order to pursue spiritual growth. You know, sometimes we think, okay, God, give me this huge sign that lets me know what's next, what I need to do. But all he wants us to do is to continue to grow. So, Patti, I wanted to ask you, in what areas are we called to pursue growth? Good morning, C3. How are you guys? 
It is truly a privilege and an honor to be here with you guys worshiping God. And yes, Cindy, um, like you were saying before, we are not to um, wait for a sign because um, there will be no sign. We are meant to grow. Um, everything about God is about growth. It's never stagnant, it's never just stay where you're at, you're done with you, let's get the next person. Um, and of course, we never want to stray from, from the Bible. We are reading this book, but within the book, in, um, in Lucas, Luke, sorry, Spanish, English, bilingual, sorry, <laughs> sorry. So in Luke 2.52, it tells us that Jesus grew in wisdom, stature, and in um, favor with man and with God. So basically, it's not just that, oh, the book says you have to grow, or pastor says you have to grow, or you have to be in a team, you have to know. The Bible tells us that our model to follow is Jesus, right? That's the standard. So we never want to look to ourselves to have the expectation of what we need to be. We always want to be looking at to Jesus. Jesus is our standard. That's because that's, that's where we aspire, right? Everyone else falls short, but Jesus is perfect. And although we are imperfect, but because we are with him, he will help us get to where we need to go. Amen. Yeah, feel free to praise God. So going from, from, from that point that we are called to grow, the areas that we are to grow is spiritual growth, uh, wisdom, stature, and in favor with God and men. So those are the specific areas. So it's not just like we were saying before, just a rat race going in circles and let's see what happens. No, there is a purpose, there is a system, there is something for you to follow that's gonna help you get to that place where you need to be in growth. I love it. And how can we grow in these areas? So if we are going to talk about spiritual growth, it's kind of tricky sometimes, right? Because sometimes we don't see anything happening, right? And we're like, okay, so is, am I actually growing? Like I'm doing what they're telling me to do, but is there actually something happening within my life? Because we don't see it. And so there's a couple of things. If we are following our gifts that we already learned, right? To, to find that purpose in our life, we are staying connected to the body. Again, following what we are taught in the Bible then that is going to draw us near to God, where we're going to grow in faith. We grow near to him. We grow through the things that we go through, right? Um, difficult times, we don't like them. We wish they weren't there. But we learn from that. We grow from that. So with that being said, we also have to keep in mind, like we were making reference to a plant. As children, I don't know, can anybody raise their hand if anybody at school had to like put a seed in a little pot and yes, I, I, I know it was a long time ago, but I did it too. It was a bean. And I remember we would just sit there, literally sit there for hours and say, it didn't work. If something's broken, nothing's happening. Because we were children, right? We don't understand that underneath, in the darkness, in the wetness, in that sand, in the dirt, there's growth. And sometimes we're there, we're in that place where we don't see it, but it is happening. As long as we are following through and keeping close to God and seeking him, growth is happening. Yeah. In wisdom, the way we know that we're growing or we can achieve this growth, we can find it in James 1.5. So God being a God, it's a fa he's our father, right? An amazing father. He says that if you're lacking of wisdom, reach out to him, ask for it. Because he is more than happy to give us. We just have to ask. The, uh, the problem is that we don't sometimes ask, right? We just go searching for other stuff. But that's the first place. The second place is that God, as we spoke about the body, everybody has a, a work to be done, right? So we have pastors, we have spiritual leaders, we have teachers. So if, there is, if you're lacking in an area of wisdom, then go to that person that's around you. That, that If it's in music and you have a question, if it's about teaching children, it's about the cafe, it's about preaching, whatever it is, there's people around you that have achieved things, so go and, and, and pick at their brain and ask them questions. And um, in stature, so again, if we go back to Luke 2.52, it says that, that Jesus grew in stature. Basically, that's the physical growth, right? And it just happens. So we're babies and then we come adults and a whole bunch of stuff happened in the middle. And, and the Bible doesn't talk a lot about how he was a toddler and all that stuff, right? But he did grow. But 
Obviously, he became an adult, right? And he had his ministry. But just like that happens, that we have to nurture our bodies. And we've, how many have heard about that? Got to exercise, got to eat right, got to rest. We, we've heard all of that. I mean, I'm sure, because I know I've heard it many, many, many times. So that's our part, right? We're taking care of our body. We need to take care of our bodies in that way. But also, because we are called to build um, something that's eternal, so it's not just about the physical body growing. Also, we have to understand that we need to recognize between what is uh, important, like this needs to be done, and what's urgent. Like we're going to get caught up on the doing, the doing, the doing, and then we're forgetting about what we're actually called to do. So we need to make sure that we're taking time for that. And to grow in favor with God, come on. We come to church, we worship, we seek him in his word. We, we are not only reading his word, but we're allowing the word to read back to us, to tell us like what we need to hear that sometimes we don't want to, but it's, it's there. Um, so always seeking him, it's always going to um, strengthen that relationship, which is our number one most important relationship. And then our relationship with man. And we go back to the same thing where we're not an island. We're not called to be alone. And I know I've been... I've said that before, I, you know, I'm good. Um, thank God for, for transformation. Because the truth is that we're not called to be an island. Because when you don't give what you have, somebody else is going to miss out. They're missing out on what you have to give, and they need that. Yes, praise Jesus. That is so true. And we need to remember it's not about us. It's all about Jesus, right? Because we are his body. So therefore, next time when you're thinking, eh, I don't really want to do this, I don't need this, but you might not need it, but the person next to you does. So let's make sure we're remembering it's not about us. Okay? Wow, Amen. That's super good. I feel like let's give another round of applause to that word, right? That was really, really good. Uh, Patti, so how can, what are some tips that maybe you have read through the book that we can apply to our daily life? Like, what are some questions we should be asking ourselves, aside from what you've already talked about, just to kind of reflect on maybe certain areas of our life? Sure. Um, so just remember, a side note, if you're not growing, then you're resigning yourself to living a life, a diminished life, not the life that God has called you to live. He has promised to give us life more abundantly. That means that it's, wow, you know, it's not just a little bit, it's more abundantly. It's more than what we can even imagine. But if you resign not to grow and to just be stagnant, then you yourself are doing that. God isn't, the church isn't, the pastors aren't, we're doing that. So just wanted to remind you guys about that. Um, another thing that we can do, and the book does explain that we take either once a week or once a month, sometime, you know, just some quiet time where we reflect on our areas of our life, whether it be family life, whether it be marriage, relationships, whether it be the um, ministry where you're serving in or your finances, to take a time to kind of like just be quiet and, you know, silent and just kind of within yourself and speaking with God and reflect on, okay, how can I grow in these areas? How am I? And basically, if you're in the same place you were last year, and today you're in that same place in any of those areas or any other area that you, you want to see growth, then it's the moment to take the time to really reflect on, on growth. Yeah. Amen. Wow. I know one of the questions in there was about how's your social life? When was the last time you engaged with others? So maybe you're coming to church and you've been faithful and you're here every Sunday, but you haven't gotten to know anybody. You know, or even with your friends, you know, I have some friends from high school and that was almost 10 years ago and I still see them and try to make time to see them. And so when you ask that question, like, okay, how's my social life? Am I engaging with friends? And then you're like, haven't seen anybody in two years. You know, like we don't want to do life alone. So you get to really reflect in that or how's your social media time? You know, even the phones now tell us like your screen time this week was up 20%. It's like, oh my gosh, what did I not do this week? Because that's up uh, in percentage wise, you know, so. I encourage you to buy the book. We do sell it in the library. It's called What's Next. You can order it online. There's even the digital version. And we're going to continue the series next week with uh, Make a Difference. But let's give a big round of applause to our panel participants.
And while they're doing that, I just wanted to talk a little bit to close off this Discover Your Purpose. Um, like I said, I feel like something that we always ask ourselves or we're saying is the I don't knows, right? And we talked about last week how it's like a chain that we need to break in the sense of why do I feel like I don't know what the future has in store for me? You know, I've felt like that, maybe you have. And the enemy actually does want to confuse us. Like, that's part of his job is to have us so confused and so, like, is it left or is it right? Or do I switch jobs or do I not switch jobs? You know, but God is reminding us that we have a purpose already inside of us that we get to live out, that we get to develop and fully pursue, but we have to seek it. We have to learn about our spiritual gifts. We have to, you know, figure out our place in the body of Christ and grow and want to grow. You know, I don't want to stay the same. I hope you guys don't want to stay the same. We have to want to keep growing and keep looking for our purpose and, and doing that uh, on a daily basis. Um, and, you know, knowing our purpose is second uh, to knowing Christ, right? We've all accepted Jesus into our heart, and I hope we have. And then after we accept Jesus, you know, now that we're saved, we can discover our purpose. That's the second thing. And I find it truly amazing because I've been in that boat of being just confused and, and thinking, like, for example, with work, you know, like I've been at my job for five years. And now that I'm having a baby, I'm figuring out if that's still the right career path for me because of the type of work that I do. I have to be available six days a week, you know, from mornings to evenings. And it's like, wow, I'm going to have my own little person now. I'm going to want to spend time with her, right? And so questions come up like, okay, finances, you know, finances or like, you know, Gregory, get three jobs, figure it out. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I, like I said, that's what I can apply to my life right now at this moment, but I'm sure yours looks a little different. Uh, so why don't you join me and stand to your feet this morning and let's worship God and pray to him about discovering our purpose. Hemos podido escuchar, nos hemos humillado para cumplir hoy tu voluntad. 